Hey guys, it's Ryder here with another Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3 review. This is episode Purpose in the S.H.I.E.L.D. So, this was a really cool episode. I feel like this is the, so far, this is the best season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that we've seen so far. Granted, we've only seen two episodes, but so far, there's not, I haven't felt any weak spots at all, uh, at all of what, you know, what, what could have been another lackluster season one, this is just great. Uh, it feels like a, almost a completely different show, but this was a lot of fun. So we got to revisit a couple new, or not new characters, but uh, characters that we met in season one. If you guys remember the Doctor, uh, the Asgardian Doctor, um, if you get, you know, from that, there was a big episode with the stick. And um, in, in season one, where this Asgardian stick, it was right after Thor the Dark World. Um, but, the, you know, that doctor up here, his, his name is uh, Professor Elliot Randolph. So you guys probably remember him, Randolph. Uh, but he's an Asgardian, like, posing to be a, a doctor scientist. S.H.I.E.L.D. obviously found out about him. But he was a big deal. So uh, let's get right into this, because he really helped a lot with the monolith. That was kind of, like, the main thing here. Also, like, Fitz and Simmons. Uh, where Simmons was, um, but, you know, just a lot in general, so let's get right into it with another top five, and number five on the list is, Daisy Johnson is becoming a leader, so this was a point that was brought up by Andrew Gardner, uh, if you guys remember him, he was, from, he was a new character that was introduced last season, uh, where he was revealed as May's ex-husband, so he, he, like, evaluates all of these humans. I'll, I'll be talking about that. Uh, that's my number four moment, so I'll be talking about that in a minute. But he's talking with Daisy, and, you know, they're talking about, you know, the new and humans, and, you know, they're just kind of talking about Coulson also, like, what's Coulson doing? Like, how he's going about business now? You know, is, is Coulson, you know, going off the deep end? And then, you know, uh, Daisy kind of asked, like, for an analysis, like, Vaguely, she asked for an analysis from him on her, you know, about her, like, mindset right now and what's going on. And he feels like Daisy is becoming a bi a really big leader. And that was awesome because already, I mean, the fact that they're already recognizing this, that, you know, Daisy Johnson, she, Daisy Johnson eventually becomes one of the biggest agents in S.H.I.E.L.D. She is, like, the... The, one of the best, one of the most powerful, one of the most well-known. And, uh, you know, next to, you know, Natasha Romanoff, Bobby Morris, of course. Uh, but you had, I mean, the, these, all three of those figures exist, you know, in, in, Agents of, in Agent, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We have Quake, Mockingbird, and Black Widow. So, we can see that she's eventually, I feel like they might, she might inherit the role of director from Coulson. Um, similar as to how Maria Hill inherited the role of director from Nick Fury. Uh, she did that in the comics and in some of the TV shows as well, the animated TV shows. But in, you know, in this case we could have, because S.H.I.E.L.D. basically only exists right now. I mean, it exists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's very secret. So we only know about S.H.I.E.L.D. from the TV show. So, you know, to have director Coulson maybe eventually pass on, uh, you know, pass that on to... Daisy, I think that could be really cool. I was really excited by that. Number four, the Secret Warriors are under contract. So, basically, what I mean by that is the Secret Warriors are in the process of becoming a team. And they will become a team very soon. They, are, they have a title. Uh, they actually said, they name-dropped the Secret Warriors in this episode. So that was cool. So that, they're not even, like... They're not even going to try to hint at that. They're just coming right out and saying that, number one. Number two, Dr. Andrew Gardner has to come and approve all of these new Inhumans that have been discovered. Um, most recently, uh, Joey Gut Gutinarius, I believe. And uh, he's the new guy from last season who, or not last season, last week's episode, who can melt down metal. But he's very unstable and, you know, Daisy wants all these new Inhumans that they're, they're discovering to be approved, but Andrew Gardner is saying they're not ready yet. So I'm just really hoping that they find somebody who is ready, like ASAP. Like I really want to see some, you know, I really want to see Hellfire from the comics. 
Hellfire, grandson of the Phantom Rider, Phantom Rider, partner of Ghost Rider. I mean, they could just set up a whole thing with that, that kind of connects to Ghost Rider. And instead of having, uh, you know, Hellfire be the grandson of Phantom Rider, they could have him being the grandson of Ghost Rider and have Ghost Rider have been a thing in the past. Who knows? But they could they could do something cool with that. But uh, I'm excited that they're at least mentioning the Secret Warriors and that they're coming soon. Number three, what's May been up to? So we finally get to see and learn where May has been. Uh, last week, she was not in the first episode of the season, but we learned that she went on some... She might have gone on some honeymoon with Andrew Gardner. We're not too sure about that. Didn't get too many of those details, but she is with her father. She's um, trying to protect him from Ward, and she's trying to leave the S.H.I.E.L.D. life behind, but she just can't because there's too, there's too much unfinished business. Quoting, uh, you know, Agent May's father. So, uh, you know, she that's where she kind of stands. But Hunter, Lance Hunter, was sent on a mission to go find and kill Grant Ward. So, now he's going to kill Ward without Bobby. Bobby can't because she's still in recovery from the season finale in season two. And now Hunter goes and he's able to find May through some telephone calls she made, like, through a payphone. So he he found her, and he said, "You, I know you're trying to leave this behind, but we need your help. And she originally says no, but later we find out that she's going with uh, him, and they're going to go find and kill Warts. So then she can finish that unfinished business and then move on. Number two, Hydra is being rebuilt. This, this I, we expected. We knew that Ward was rebuilding Hydra. Now, Ward is dark now. He, I feel like he's even, he's darker than he was last season. And I think, you know, the, the Hydra Ward we were introduced to in season one is like a centimeter of what this evil Ward is. This is a true dark, twisted, evil person. I kind of like that because I think that, you know, uh, Brett Dalton plays Ward really well. When he's trying to, when he's when he's being like really like psychotic and kind of creepy, I think that's when Ward is at his best. Not when Ward's trying to charm everybody. I mean, if you really think about it, you can kind of see how Ward is Hydra. You know, it just it makes sense. You know, I can't even picture him with team with with Shield anymore. Just it, he doesn't feel like a Shield agent at all. Uh, so even if I was to rewatch season one, it just wouldn't feel like that. But the way he's rebuilding a Hydra is he goes and he finds this billionaire kid who's on his yacht, and uh, he's not a kid, he's like a, probably in his 20s, but uh, he goes and he takes him hostage with Kabo, or Kibo. Uh, Kibo is like Ward's like right-hand man. Right now he's who's helping him rebuild S.H.I.E.L.D., or not S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Hydra. So uh, they kidnap this kid, this 20-year-old kid, and, uh, you know, they're like, what are the passwords? We want to get some money, you know, whatever. And, you know, that part, that wasn't really that important, but Kibo was kind of torturing him into getting a password. And out of nowhere, he's like, all right, fine, I give him, but he, I'll give you the passwords. But, you know, he was, he actually had a pen and he stabbed Kibo in the hand or in the arm or something like that. And then he, you know, said, no one treats me like that. He beat, you know, he was beating him with, like, a uh, big, like, paperweight rock thing. I don't know what it was, but it was something hard. And he was beating him, and he's like, no one treats me that way. Do you know who I am? Do you know who my father is? And Ward walks in right at that moment, and he goes, yes, I am aware of who your father is. You're the son of Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. And immediately, I'm like, holy shit, what is going on? And I'm like, oh my god. They're using the Baron Strucker's son is going to help Ward rebuild Hydra. That's what's amazing. So this kid wasn't even, he, he's like, my dad never let me see any of his business or anything like that. And now, and then Ward goes, well, it's not his business anymore. It's yours. So technically, because, you know, uh, because Strucker was sort of the last head of Hydra, I mean, Ward is kind of this new rising small head of Hydra, but technically I think his son, I forget his name, but it's like, it might be William Von Strucker or something like that. I, I don't know what his name is, but it's he's a Strucker. 
So that was really crazy. I really hope that he knows about like Red Skull or Johan Schmitz or whatever his name is. So uh, I don't know. I think that was really cool. I'm really excited about the Hydra story. And now the Strucker's son at the in the end credit epi- the end credit scene at the end of this episode, we see that uh, he's going undercover to Andrew Gardner's. Um, you know, class for psychology, and he's probably going to try to, they're probably going to take Andrew Gardner hostage to get back in May or something like that, but it's all going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see what else, who who else comes out of Ward rebuilding Hydra, I really hope Madam Hydra comes out of this, like Viper, I think that'd be cool, but yeah. Um, and then my number one at moment from this episode was Simmons Returns to shield so the big focus of this was the whole monolith thing so to understand the monolith fits and uh team in shield they go and they find uh professor randolph who's in prison but he's really happy in prison because he's a library and a comfortable bed but this guy's an asgardian i explained that to you guys earlier so they go ahead and they break him out or they they don't they kind of break him out he kind of gets out himself but he, they basically break him out, and they go to uh, this place. They, after going to see the monolith, uh, you know, and some j- some jokes are cracked. You know, they go to this place. I think what it was in England, I believe. Think, and where the Hebrew word, uh, you know, I mean, that meant death, was inscribed on the wall. And it was actually, it's like a secret, there was a secret room that it held the monolith. It was able to control the monolith. So they, uh, Agent Coulson calls over Mac. Mac goes ahead and brings, you know, with a helicopter, he brings the monolith uh, to this England place and they put it into this hole. And, you know, after trying once to, you know, with the, use the generators to shake the monolith to turn it into liquid and... Daisy kind of, you know, got a head rush or whatever, and she heard this piercing sound. But they tried again, and they went ahead, and they were able to shake the... Daisy was able to use the quake powers to shake the monolith to open up a portal and turn it into that liquid. Fitz was not... He wasn't supposed to do this, but he jumped right into the portal, uh, and he went to that planet where Fitz was, or where Simmons was. He was on a harness, though. So... He's screaming, Simmons, Simmons, and Simmons comes, and she's, she's waiting kind of by there, and there, it was this big, epic, dramatic scene where they barely were touching, their hands were barely touching, and they, you know, you didn't think that Simmons was gonna make it out of there, and they're both, they're just, they have like, they're literally locking by fingers right now, they're using all of their strength, and there's this storm, and everything, and, and Daisy uses so much of her power that it, she, shakes the monolith so much that the monolith shatters into this ash and you you're like oh, are Fitz and Simmons both stuck on the planet now and then you see Fitz his head pop up and he's like oh he's looking around and then out of he then he's brushing the, some of the ash away and then you see Simmons face and Simmons is there too and you're like yes they find they're finally back so that's really a good thing but at the end of this episode uh simmons is in like this containment place because they're just she's you know in like the shield rehab now it's not really rehab but like where she's gaining back her strength and she just she's sleeping and she just wakes up and she holds out this this like wood thing that's so i don't know i think she's gonna be changed a little bit now that she's been there for so long um, I'm really wondering what's gone on in over there. Like, I hope they do a big flashback thing. But I think really, I'm really happy that they did that. And I just can't wait to see where the story goes. So let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this new episode. How excited were you to see fit, uh, to see Simmons return? And uh, what are you thinking about Hydra and Wolfgang von Strucker's son? This is pretty cool. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to click, share, like, subscribe. And I'm Ryder, signing off from Toys with Attitude. And keep riding, guys. Bye.